Happy holidays, happy new year, and welcome to On Call with Dr. Goldman. I'm here today with Dr. Michael Moskowitz, who's the Vice President for Clinician Resilience and Well-Being at Catholic Health. Michael, welcome. Thank you so much, Jay, for inviting me. Uh, it's, it's a pleasure. I, you, you and I spent a ton of time together at the hospital and in the office. What is clinician resilience and why are we looking at it at Catholic Health? Well, that's a great question, Jay. So to first identify what resilience is, you have to identify what it's trying to do. It's trying to combat burnout. And burnout really is when you're at work, you feel that you are not yourself. You don't feel the same. You feel that you have lost some of the energy that you normally had and you brought to work. So what resilience really is, is the ability of either yourself, an organization, a community to come together and fight back against those feelings and give you the resources to engage in a positive manner to try and give better care to your patients. So that's important. The obvious next question then, do we have any issues at Catholic Health? Tell me about, I, I know you studied the data, give, give me a flavor. We actually did a, a system-wide survey last year and it did show that a little less than one third of our clinicians have some sort of burnout, which is pretty much on trend with the national average. So but, wait, so pause there, so about a third had some level of burnout. Mm -hmm. But that's not more or less than what you see nationally. It's really, that's well, what right, we're seeing nationally. We are, it, when you break down the data even further, we are pretty much exactly on trend with, with all major uh, big-time big, big -time hospital systems. It, it, it's interesting. It's good. It's bad. I'm, I'm glad we're not more. Uh, but clearly, then, there's a national problem with this, uh, with burnout and, and a lack of resilience or a struggle to be resilient. Uh, what else did you find in that survey? Well, really, versus the national average, our clinicians at Catholic Health did really great in well-being. What does well-being really mean? It means I am personally healthy and professionally healthy. I have great relationships with my coworkers, where we sometimes struggle. It's a, a term called activation. What does activation mean? It means that when I'm working, I'm fully present, and I can do a great job to take care of my patients. While clinicians as a whole do great versus other providers, first and national average is an area that we can work on to help our clinicians do a better job of that. We have started an educational CME program to really educate our colleagues. We have just started a teamwork program. It's based on the Compass trial. You could go look it up from Mayo Clinic, in which really shows when you bring people together outside of the office, you improve their overall well-being, you decrease their burnout, and you improve their retention. So we've just kicked off that program the past couple of weeks, and we've had great success. Wait, so let's pause about that. So what you're doing is you're taking physicians out of, and, and APPs, you know, all clinicians, mm -hmm. out of the hospital setting into a more casual setting, restaurant? Restaurant is what yeah, we started and, with. And you're bringing them together, and you're talking about burnout, you're talking about life. I do bring up why we're there. I give a brief introduction. We do talk about some of the issues that are going on, especially if there's some commonality among the specialties. Now, the plan is not to bring the same group always together, right? You want to have a common... You want to have a difference of views of what's going on. But what I really want to do is try and build some bonds because we you know that if you like the person you're working with, you're going to be happier. You're going to look forward to it. And we have all that data to back it up. So it's just not my opinion. We have, we have proof to say that this really does work. From the Mayo Clinic. From the Mayo Clinic. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. What do we do to support our peers? So that is another great topic. And all the national data shows that to be a system that really supports its clinicians, you need some sort of peer support program. In that vein, we have commissioned uh, the RISE program. RISE stands for Resilience in Stressful Events, coming from Johns Hopkins. We are going- So we're taking from Mayo, we're taking from Hopkins, I like that, okay. Exactly, right? We, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. We have people who've done it great. We have the resources here at Catholic House to invest in, in our people, and we're gonna do that. And we are going to train our own to become a great peer support system, so in those really stressful events, a bad, a bad outcome, a really tough day at work, you have someone who you can talk to right away, real time, to try and get some feedback and kind of get it off your chest. And we know that is the best way to deal with these tough, tough times. What's been the perception from the medical staff? I know you've traveled, you've seen all the campuses, you've spoken to so many physicians, APPs. What's been the, the, the response to your program? So, number one, most rewarding part, and I've gotten in both an email, text message form, is thank you, right? 
there is a lot of perceived value in what we do, which I didn't realize until I started. And number one is, thank you for listening. Thank you for bringing it up. This is out there. No one has spoke about it. It was kind of on the underbelly of what we deal with every day. And we appreciate that both you and the system is trying to tackle it. So that really is number one. And that is for me is the most rewarding what gets me up every day is that we really are making a difference. And number two is there are pockets in every one of our campuses of people who are passionate about that. And I'm going to continue to ask them to help me and drive this message across. So the leaders are out there. They just needed a platform to, to share their knowledge. No, I appreciate that. I think that's that's what we want to hear, right? We want to hear that uh, people are responding there. It's a pull. It's not a push from us, but mm -hmm. it's a pull from the campuses. Mm -hmm. It's a pull from our clinicians to say this is important and, and you know, let's do it. Let's mm -hmm. drive on it. Now, you didn't start as a clinician resilience and well-being expert. Tell, tell me how you got to where you are today. Trained at Good Sam locally. Um, Family medicine, started in a very busy practice. So Wait, can we tell everybody that uh, we worked together when you were at Good Sam? Yes. I believe you spent a month in my office. I, I don't know if you learned anything. I did. But, I, uh, more than you know, you still did not hair, have hair at that time, so it's not a, <laughs> right? But more than you know, and you know. It's oh, been many years. Yeah. Exactly. 15 years ago yeah, now. Yeah. So, so yes, Jay was my one of my attendings back, back where I trained, so it's, we have a long-standing relationship. But so started Good Sam, then started working at a practice facility with Mercy, one, one, one of our clinical campuses, and been doing that. Also picked up a leadership role in our, in our primary care service line, trying to engage, grow, and cultivate an outpatient service that our patients would really be proud of. And then I started feeling in the office, you know, I didn't have the same vigor that I had before. You personally? Personally. I just, oh. I felt, you know, I felt, you know, I still loved what I do, and I Still, I'm practicing love what I do, but I'm like, if I was starting to feel, man, I didn't, I didn't want to make that phone call tonight, then other people are starting to feel, starting to feel the same way. And in that vein, I had a conversation with you. I can tell the story, and one of our one of our vice presidents here, and I'm like, you know, what are we doing about this as a system? And you know, you mentioned to me, funny you should mention that we have been looking for the right person to try and lead that charge and do it. It's been on our ideas for many years, and we kind of had a meeting to mind. You put some pen to paper, and here we are one year later. Yeah, no, we're very thankful for Dr. Shaughnessy's support. Yes. Uh, uh, I, I, he and I had personally spoken about this type of role for many years, but we just didn't have the right person. Uh, so I'm, I'm happy you stepped up. So you're a pretty busy guy. Do you ever have any downtime? Do you find time to do anything besides work, 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 work? I do have my one major passion is golf. And for me, golf is my breakaway, right? It's three to four hours out in nature, walking. I, some people like riding carts. I like to walk. You walk. I always walk, right? You push it, the bag or you carry the bag? Um, Carry, you know. Carry the bag. Yeah, carry bag. the bag. Carry the bag. Get, get some exercise. Try and, right, it's my one place where my phone is off. You do not bother me. I can recharge. I'm ready to go the next day. I feel like it's my break. As I like to say, it's when times are tough, it's what I look forward to during the week. And it's during that time, it's what I can be to, to break away, right? Because there is no real downtime in what you do. So as I tell people, you don't need a two-week vacation or a change in job. You just need that mindful moment of break away, clear your head, get back to the purpose you want to do. And that's what golf does to me. It doesn't have to be golf. It could be anything that you're passionate about, but you need something that would break away from work so you're able to be present when you have to be back at work. I think that's really, really insightful. Um, it's not the golf as much as it's the time away. Put the phone away, mm. connect with nature, disconnect from mm. work. Mm. Uh, Michael, uh, this has been an absolute pleasure for me. It, it's, it's a, I will tell you honestly, it's a joy to watch you grow up in medicine. Mm. Uh, you come quite a distance from uh, the 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 eager resident uh, that uh, spent a month uh, learning pulmonary and critical care medicine mm. with me. Uh, and I am super optimistic to see how you're going to drive resilience and well-being through Catholic health. Thank you very much. It's Thank you so much for inviting me.